talking Ohio State football with uh, Pat Murphy from Bucknuts on 247 Sports here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please like the videos. That's very important, as well as share them out on social media. Not everyone knows that we're here. So uh, spread the word. And of course, subscribe here to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Hit that uh, bell for the notifications as well. All right. So the Big Ten scenario is that a team has to play six games to qualify for the Big Ten championship game, unless there are so many cancellations elsewhere in the conference that it brings down the average number of games played by each team. But somebody did the math recently, and there would have to be another 12 cancellations uh, the rest of the season, which would just be, we would have bigger problems if, if there were 12 cancellations uh, about playing any more football the rest of the year. So that's not going to happen. So I'm going to lay out one scenario for you, Pat, which is probably, I'm not a genius. I'm sure it's out there already. That Indiana, let's say they played the last two games of the season and finished 7-1 in the Big Ten, and Ohio State does not play one of the two final games, and they're 5-0. and Okay, we could have an argument all day about who deserves it more, a 7-1 and team or a 5-0 and team. Well, the 5-0 and team's got the better winning percentage. They won the head-to-head. But the 7-1 and team actually played out the full schedule, and the 5-0 and team missed games that, hey, if, you're, if you want to be objective about it, could be lost, even though we would expect Ohio State to beat those teams. But if Indiana misses the next two weeks, they're 5-1, and Ohio State's 5-0. and What I find to be a very ludicrous possibility would be a 5-1 and Indiana team going to play the Big Ten Championship game and a 5-0 and Ohio State team going to play whomever, Wisconsin probably, the same day as the Big Ten Championship game when if they were given a forfeit, let's say, they would then qualify for the Big Ten Championship game at 5-1 and one with the head-to-head win. Crazy. Here's, here's an even crazier scenario, or yeah. well, part of your scenario. Could it be that if Indiana and Northwestern play in the Big Ten Championship game, now you do get the Big Ten champion out of that, so you get a another part of what the committee looks at, but does a win against a Wisconsin team who after Northwestern lost this past week while they've, while they're head to head uh, is in favor of Northwestern, but Wisconsin just, you know, has that national respect as, you know, a, a long time big 10 contender. Is that actually a better win than Ohio state playing Northwestern and even a one loss Northwestern who I imagine would be ranked higher than Wisconsin, but just in the perception of things, you know, we are dealing with people here and, and they have metrics and all sorts of things. And they're supposed to look at this and, and not kind of take into account the, the program name. But let's be honest, you know, when, when you're talking about Wisconsin and or Wisconsin versus Northwestern in terms of who I play, the argument we made that, that you could have a better win um, against a Wisconsin program just in terms of perception. So, yeah, it's, it's a crazy scenario in general. I mean, the easiest way to get from, from an Ohio state perspective, to get to where you want to go is play these last two games against Michigan state this weekend. And then Michigan, the final weekend, you win those games, you're in, you're done, you're good. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously the playoff committee would, would, so I would imagine select an undefeated Ohio state team if they win the big 10. Um, like you said, though, it certainly gets complicated. And, uh, if, if Ohio state doesn't play this week or doesn't play the next week against Michigan, um, you know, the, the Buckeyes won't have played those six games. I don't see the big 10 changing the rules now, even if it means leaving, you know, the, the defending three-time champion Ohio state out, um, you know, you've gotten this far into the season without making that rule change. If you did it now, just to let Ohio state. And I think that that sets a bad precedent. So, um, that would be a very strange situation, especially as you mentioned, Ohio state and Indiana played each other and Ohio state won. Um, so, you know, it, it would be it would be very 2020 to to see something like that happen. Um, you know, if we're if we're talking playoff selection and, you know, if Ohio State doesn't play again until maybe that Wisconsin game, uh, I think it would be difficult to say five and oh, Ohio State gets in over a Big Ten champion or or another team from another conference. Um, you know, maybe if you get a sixth game, but don't get to play in the big 10 championship game, you know, something like that. But it, it, it certainly gets complicated here trying to figure out what the committee has to do. I do not uh, wish uh, to be on that committee this year because there's, there's, I mean, we're just talking from the Ohio state perspective. There's, there's a lot of other questions they'll have to answer, you know, especially if, if other teams have to move or cancel games. 
I have no issue with complicated. I understand it's complicated. I have an issue with it doesn't make sense. And yeah. to send a five and one team that lost to the five and O team doesn't make sense when the I understand the requirement of a sixth game, but you can automatically give that sixth game as a loss to that other team and they still qualify for the Big Ten championship game. So why not just send them? All right. Yeah, and I think to your point about the respect that Wisconsin has uh, nationally and also from the playoff committee, I think is shown in their initial rankings. Even though Northwestern at 5-0 and with arguably the best resume in the Big Ten, I certainly thought that they did just on paper, was ranked eighth having just defeated Wisconsin. Wisconsin was still number 16 at 2-1 and with a loss to Northwestern. 